Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the number one mixed martial arts show in Pakistan. This is The Way In. Today's guest is a returning guest, a returning hero for The Way In. Back when the pandemic hit a year ago and we were really under stress to figure out who to talk to, what to what to do, how to understand this whole scenario. This man saved us with his great, great interview. And since then, he's got two wins back to back more recently over Felix Polianitis. I'm sorry if I butchered that, even though I just asked you for the pronunciation, Alex. But Alex Popik is here on the podcast all the way from beautiful Munich, Germany. Again, Alex, most important question. Number one question. How are you, my brother? How's everything? Welcome back. Uh, happy to be back on the show. <laughs> nice to see you again. Happy and healthy. And um, yeah, I feel I feel great. Summer is just um, coming, so yeah, nothing better than that. Just came of a win, like you said. Now enjoying time with the family, but also uh, I got back to coaching, got back to 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 the gym, teach my guys, also back to my own training. So yeah, life is going well. That's good. I mean, Munich top team. Uh, that was a project you took up uh, after our last podcast. Uh, of course, two fights, back-to-back -back wins. Now three wins in a row, uh, as we discussed before we got on the air. The one after Francisco de Souza, which is when we last spoke. Uh, the one against Saba Hosks. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that as well. That actually got nominated for MTK MMA. Fight, actually won MTK MMA Fight of the Year. Uh, the shirt you're wearing, your management company. First of all, I just want to say, uh, you know, last time we spoke, you were talking about the UFC. Uh, do you feel like... Now, with everything, the momentum, the right management company behind you, your training and everything in your life going so well, do you think it's inevitable that you will be in the UFC? Yeah, I think this should be, it should be time now. It is time now. Three wins after the Contender Series and uh, three good wins, two in the first round and one against a very tough and uh, good opponent in Chabahach. He was seven and two at that point. I fought him. And this was a great fight, like you said, hard fight, but I fought well. I dominated the fight, showed the people that I I have a high level and I'm ready for the UFC. Yeah, high level, Muay yeah. Thai, and you mixed up everything uh, brilliantly. Uh, this seems like, and you know, th I want to talk about Jamal Hill really quick. Jamal Hill has been on a roll. This is the last guy you lost to. He's climbing the ranks slowly in the light heavyweight division. And, you know, every time I see him, it validates you to me in so many ways because you were in my eyes jamal hill's toughest challenge he steamrolled everyone else but he had some problems against you um everything indicates to me that you you have a very good case to make it back uh into the ufc rankings uh and of course into the ranks of the ufc what have you been making of the ufc's light heavyweight division let's just cut the cut the fat as we like to call it you know let's get straight into it uh what do you make of the current state of the ufc light heavyweight division the champion of course sean blahovich re recently coming off a big win going to face glover Teixeira next what do you make of these guys and what do you think of this condition of the light heavyweight division yeah first of all so uh, to the fight with jamal hill um like you said he, he beats the the guys pretty easily right now in the UFC so and the first round against him was very close 50-50 round and uh, yeah I lost the fight but from that on I, I developed as a person uh, uh, as a martial artist everything so I'm ready now and it was good actually to have these three other fights to gain more experience have more training so now I'm even more ready for 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 this level in the UFC and uh, Jamal Hill, he's very, very good fighter. He even beat uh, Owen Saproy as a mm. former title challenger by KO. So he dominated the, the fight totally. Yeah. So, but from that on, yeah. Um, speaking about the UFC, of course, I wanna, I wanna go there and win, show solid performance, and then climb the ranks. So, yeah, I enjoy the journey. That is the most important. I don't wanna put too much pressure on myself you know i want to enjoy the journey and just be the best version of myself and put everything into it and uh, yeah the like you said that the sky is the limit you know so let's see for sure and and i'm really happy to hear that that you enjoy the process that you enjoy fighting that you enjoy staying active i know you've been hungry for a fight since the pandemic has hit uh and i know we talked about this last time as well a lot of things changed for you obviously as it did for everybody when the pandemic hit 
Uh, now, when you look at yourself, uh, you know, retrospectively compared to before when the pandemic started, how do you feel like things have gone and what do you love about this journey you're on the most? What is about fighting that really pulls you in and keeps you there? Yeah, so first of all, pandemic or not, I always train like 365 days per year. I think about <laughs> MMA, so I train all year round. And actually, this pandemic helped me in getting better as an athlete and also as a coach because I had more time to study the game, to study new um, techniques. Actually, I spent some money, bought some instructional courses from uh, high-level coaches. I studied that and uh, we drilled it with our guys. So I, I developed as a fighter in this time. And I love what I love about it is the process of always uh, getting better. So in my in my Instagram, I have the saying, uh, process is primary. So yeah. I always want to get better, uh, climb the next ladder and so on. So I just enjoy it to, to train and get better, enjoy yeah. the whole, whole process. Yeah. You're a player coach. Uh, like you've mentioned, you play for your own team, you coach your own team. Uh, does that in any way hinder your development as a fighter? And actually, the way you're describing it to me, actually, it's quite the contrary. Because like you say, you love the process. You think the process is primary. Uh, and you're telling me that you you yourself take up things from other coaches and then you implement them and you drill them and you figure them out. What has it been like doing both of these things, coaching people and also coaching yourself in a way? So coaching people, I think, helps you as a, as a fighter, as an athlete, because you repeat the techniques you have about, you have... Uh, have to help other people with the techniques you see mistakes and then uh, you can correct in them but also correct maybe in yourself so you see things work or don't work so you you can adjust all the time and uh, coaching my myself and my team yeah we we do drills sometimes i think it's better to have a coach yeah. who, who organizes everything and is on, on top and uh, oversees everything but also now in this time, I feel like it helped me a lot to, to watch all those instructionals and repeat stuff I've learned over the years and uh, create my own my own training schedule because then I can train how I feel. And um, yeah, it ha all, all things in life have, have positives and negatives, but mm. I, I feel I, I developed a lot in this time, actually. For sure. And it, and it seems like it as well. I mean... Uh, just from everything, the way you're moving, the way those uh, one-twos are landing, the way those inside leg kick two-ones are landing. You know what I mean? They're, they're crisp, they're clear. You can tell they're drilled and you can tell they're intentional and manufact and tailor-made to your requirement because you don't, nobody knows your body like you do. You know what I mean? Nobody knows what you need or what you want as a fighter better than you do. In fact, a lot of fighters have followed a similar mentality of, you know, uh, kind of being self-taught or, or being somebody who, uh, you know, but I'm sure you still pick up uh, drills and techniques and other martial arts styles from other coaches. Uh, do you have other coaches that you go to often and, you know, you learn from them and everything? Do you constantly keep going to people and evolving yourself or is it a self-made process entirely? So uh, I have a couple of training partners. One actually is a former kickboxer. He has more than 50 kickbox fights. So he is essentially my, my striking coach yeah. in a sense. He's my pet holder, my striking coach. And we have good wrestlers as well. We, we teach each other, you know, so, like we have a couple of heavy guys. One is like eight and one in yeah. MMA, one other is five and three in heavyweight. So we have uh, a lot of good guys training together, helping each other. And that's how we he, uh, how we develop. And um, yeah, but also um, now I think travel is a little bit more easier. So, of course, I want to go travel and, and see different things spar with other people and and keep learning yeah for sure and you know what i think is really interesting i mean uh the last time you fought of course it was a stoppage uh you were i think in a half guard and you threw short elbows and that completely ended the fight right there brutal nasty short elbows uh and and what i've seen you know 
in terms of progression you you're trying to incorporate more and more things be more well rounded towards your game and like you're saying you have different guys in the gym who do different things and teach each other and everything uh this seems like a perfect plan almost like coming together it it suits you you have heavy guys and really good guys in the gym with you uh this just seems like a recipe to keep going up and up yeah 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 definitely so um the 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 good thing is right now when i organize everything myself it's tailor made for me and we can specifically focus on the opponent or specifically drill something which you want to work on and also i want to mention uh, who got me a, a lot better more explosive more powerful is my strange condition coach i worked with him since uh, i believe starting after the the last fight from octagon and i think you see that now in my videos in my training videos in the fight everything is more powerful and even like the movement is better yeah. so that's another another thing too i incorporated and I, i speak to him very good so we we plan the training accordingly like to my we plan very good when to do what and uh, it's it's perfect yeah right now yeah and you know uh the thing is i mean and i want to talk to you about uh how you've been moving and how good you've looked uh, when you've been moving uh it's it's just been so fluid and and this is something i've learned the last couple of months a good strength and conditioning coach can really change things up for you as an mma fighter because a lot of it is technique a lot of it is you know dedicating hours into learning the martial art but a lot of it is just being able to carry your weight and sometimes somebody else's weight for the whole 15 or 25 minutes that is what often makes or breaks guys you know so that is perfect a strength and conditioning coach is something something of an essential now if you want to compete at the highest level i think yeah definitely i mean mma say explosive sport you have to be explosive you have to be strong you have to have conditioning and it's always good to have a guy who is organizing that for you who has the knowledge who studied all this and can help you uh was getting a better athlete because in the end we are all athletes and who's the better athlete uh, athlete has a has an advantage martial arts always is the number one like you, you cannot um, um instead it. of mma you cannot train snc but yeah. it's always supplemental and it makes you better as an athlete and have to be a good athlete especially um at the highest level for sure and and that you couldn't have said that better my friend uh i want to ask you what's next uh but i don't want to just ask you in terms of you know who are you fighting next or you know what is going to happen in your career next i want to i want to ask you when it comes to your mindset are you expecting something big are you keeping no expectations at all what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of months for ironside alex Bo- by the way i really like the nickname ironside that's a very good nickname am i saying that right ironside yeah that's right that's, that's right. an excellent nickname but yeah go uh, what's next for ironside alex popic yeah the next is the ufc contract uh, that's that should be next that is next and uh, mtk is working on it and this should be the next step yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> are do you have anything to say to your hopefully future potential boss dana white um you know me dana <laughs> i bring the the dog that on i always move forward i want to win i i bring the action so let's sign me man <laughs> <laughs> let's go this is a pakistani kid uh telling you and verifying this for a brilliant fighter out of germany he's he doesn't move backwards he only moves forward he hits really hard you got to sign this guy dana i mean what are you doing at this point honestly if you're not alex i know you have a really good management company behind i know you have the like you're telling me really good coaches really good training partners uh it's only looking positive it's only looking up uh your last two your last three fights have been completely dominant or they've been completely excellent fights uh it feels like you're on a bit of a roll I wish you nothing but the best my friend. I'm really really excited to get to see you on the biggest stage and I'm sure you will end up there. Uh Alex, I just want to ask you one last thing and this is kind of the one of the last questions we asked the guests. It's uh your segment. It's entirely your segment. I think we're doing this now f- for the first time since we've uh, uh did your last podcast, but this is the guest segment. You can talk about whatever you think is crucial you can talk about any subject that you think is important to discuss for you your career or anything else you can say anything get anything off your chest basically tell us your agenda this is your time so i'm going to hand the mic over to you alex um and speak your heart out my brother 
what do you have to say sorry can you repeat it the, the connection was yeah that, that's good <laughs> I, i didn't understand if you apologize fans pakistan to munich it's a bit of a it's a bit of a long connection there we're working with here uh i just mean to say this is the last segment of the podcast this is where the guest talks about whatever they want to talk about they get off their chest whatever they want to get off their chest they say whatever they want to say so whatever you want to say alex whatever it is that you want to express to the fans to your fans to the people watching go ahead the floor is yours my friend okay thanks everyone for watching um uh, thank you for being on the show again you're a very great person and uh I uh, really uh, I'm interested in coming to to Pakistan one day. Uh, Let's go. Meet all the people. <laughs> Please, we're, we're we're more than happy to have you. <laughs> Love to have you. Sorry, go on. Also, I want to say uh, thanks to my management MTK MMA and all my sponsors and all my sponsors uh, hype supplements, the Nano Squad for the CBD products, uh, my strength condition coach uh, Max And yeah, that's basically it. Um, keep grinding, everybody. Um, keep being healthy and enjoy your life. Enjoy your journey. Thanks. Progress. Uh, sorry, the process is primary, and this has been Ironside, Alex Popek. Alex, I wish you nothing but the best, my friend. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure always watching you. F- watching you fight, and it's gonna be even more of a pleasure when we finally get it, my friend. A year after our first podcast, we will see you in the UFC. Fingers crossed. Hope for the best, Alex. I wish you nothing but the best, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the amazing, the brilliant, and the always, always fun to talk to, Alex Popek. If you want to check out Alex, please go follow him on on Instagram. The link is in the bio. Uh, you uh, in the description. Pardon me of this video that you're watching right now. Go to his profile if you want personal training. You're still getting personal trainings. So- Alex, is that correct? Yeah, sure. I hit do. him up. Hit him up. This is the best personal training you can get in the Munich area. Uh and yes, yeah, support support our homeboy. Even if you're a Pakistani fan watching this show right now, you have an obligation to support this man. He loves our country. We love him back. Alex, one last time. Thank you so much for coming on, brother. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Alex Popek. This has been the way in. This has been Daniel Nasir Mirza. And from me to you, the three words that I said the last time me and Alex spoke, the three words I'll say this time Alex and I spoke, and that is keep it tight. Stay tuned. We got more coming. <laughs>